My name is Maris and I'm a freelance iOS developer and indie hacker building apps to make some side money. This video has three parts. My move to Germany, something about my freelance work, and lastly, my main side project, Trading Tracker. I will also talk about how much I make a month for my app, so stay tuned. In the last video, I showed you around Münster, my home city at the moment. I moved here a month ago and still trying to explore and look around. This move was the reason why I resigned my iOS role at IBM and started my freelancing slash contracting journey so that I can move here. So far, I like it here very much. It was a new beginning for me and with our new apartment I also started some new habits such as working out four times a week, posting regularly on X and Instagram, or learning new stuff like Next.js and Tailwind CSS. But more about that later. Münster has some very cozy coffee shops I like to work from sometimes. I'm always more productive in a coffee shop because there are less distractions. The ambient sound is a motivation and creativity booster for me. Let's talk about my freelance work now. I'm a freelancer for six months now and as I said, I switched to freelancing so that I can move freely wherever I want. Some companies do allow you to travel and work from abroad, but the bigger ones don't. I think the reason being some tax implications. Fortunately, I found a company I work for today and they don't care where I work from at all. I can work at any time. I just have to attend some team meetings and I can do whatever I want with the rest of my working hours. For me, this is the biggest advantage of being a software developer. The only thing you need are your laptop, charger, Wi-Fi and a chair. You don't even need a desk. At the same time, as a software developer, you can do whatever you want. You can create your own product or sell your services. Only a few developers actually understand what kind of power we have in our hands. Of course, if you have a full-time job or full-time contract like I do, it becomes a little bit more difficult to find enough time to build your own product. It all comes down to time management, strict task planning, work-life balance, and work boundaries. I, for example, use Notion to plan my tasks, freelance work, or the content I create. Speaking of time management, this is how I do it. I prefer to start as early as 5.30 a.m. The first couple of hours are my most productive hours in a day. I try to do a big portion of my freelance work in the morning and wrap up my day work early in the afternoon at about 2 p.m. Then I can fully focus on my side project or any other activity I'd like to do. And now my side project. I've been talking a lot in my last videos about my app Trading Tracker. And so I would like to show you what's that about and give you some more details about some implementation aspects as well as marketing and revenue. Trading Tracker is a native iOS app written fully in Swift. It's a tool for traders trading stocks, options, futures or forex. As a trader myself, I needed a simple journal where I can just quickly put my daily profit and loss and the app will do the rest for me. So that's what I did. I would say the Trading Tracker is a pretty complex app. It allows traders to not only create trades manually, but also to import trades automatically from their trading platforms or brokers. The user can simply choose the right platform and file from their phone, and the app will parse the CSV or HTML file and will create the trades. It's much more complicated than that, as each trade consists of multiple executions and then the profit is calculated by using FIFO or LIFO algorithm and it's very important for accounting and it does matter in which order the app will parse the data. Journal is the most important section. Traders can see this calendar view and they can easily see their trades for a specific day. Performance section is also very important because it tells you everything about your strategy. Based on this data, a trader can make some educated decisions and adjustments to the strategy. It tells you at what time and what day you are the most profitable. Last but not least, there is the report section. 
there's a bunch of important but also less important metrics one trader might want to know about their strategy. Now let's take a look on some marketing strategies I use and also the revenue. To be honest, I don't do much marketing. Last week I started using Apple search ads and I'm currently doing some experiments with it. But besides that, I focus on App Store search optimizations or ASO, my keywords, app reviews, and also the paywalls. But that's a topic for a whole another video. The revenue was pretty decent in October. It's my record month and all time highs. The reason for this spike in revenue is that I did a pretty big release of version 3.0 in which I basically rebuilt the app from the ground up. I also did some improvements to the paywall so that might be the root cause of this. In the group of indie developers we usually talk about MRR metric which stands for monthly recurring revenue. Currently I'm at $940 a month which does not actually mean that I get exactly this amount every single month. MRR metric does not account for one-time payments such as lifetime purchases which I also offer. I could talk a lot about what I do to increase the revenue and it would need its own video which I might do in the future. But for now, that would be it from my side. Let me know down in the comments below if you would like to know more about my side project and the business side of it. Also, make sure to subscribe and like this video and I will see you in the next one.